Hello, everybody. It's time to get into the word according to 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for being the great teacher, the simple God of understanding. You left nothing complicated for us and help us to get into your word and hunger for your word until we can eat everything that you left for us at your table. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you for making life make sense to me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So today I am going to get in to 2 Chronicles chapter 15, going straight into the word. We have been talking about this righteous man, Asa, and God is keeping his word to him. Yesterday, a million Cushites came after Asa to try to defeat him, but Asa had already committed himself to God. And for 10 years, there were no, there were no wars or no... Um, anybody trying to attack them. Then after the 10 years, this million man march, Cushites, it's a million men, came against one man and his army, and he had 500,080. And uh, the Cushites were a half a million more, almost a half a million more than he had. But that a uh, smaller army defeated a million men and God routed his soul or he smote them and not one of them was left to fight. So God is saying that when it comes down to his word, don't go against anybody that's speaking to him because he will defend them. If they are serious about him, he said, then I will be serious about anybody that is trying to attack them. So we can apply that in our own lives today. Whatever we are under attack about, God is saying, if you stay with me, then I can act, make it happen, make it, make it as if it never happened. In other words, they won't win. So we are going to a revival today. This is a revival. This is the title of a revival under Asa. And I pray that the things that I say will one day get into the ears of somebody hungry, especially my own children, that I would do everything I can to try to make this word as easy for them so that they can carry this word and make it easy for somebody else. All right, let's go to a revival. What is a real revival when it comes down to when God calls a revival? Now, when I was small, young, a revival was where we came around and we pretty much did the same thing we did you know, back then, we it's a lot of stuff that we did that was not in line with the word of God, but we, we were serious. But just because you are serious, you can be seriously wrong. But if you keep seeking God, then he'll, he'll let you stumble upon the truth and then you can change. And then um, you'll see what this revival was on the Asa. So when there is a revival, there is change. The Spirit of God came up on Azariah, son of Oded. All right, the first verse says this guy named Azariah, the Spirit of the Lord came up on him. This is a prophet, and his name is not like the well-known prophets we hear people talk about all the time. Azariah is a man that God used to go and talk to the king. And he may not be mentioned at many times, so God has people that you may not see but one time in life. And if they are instructing you according to what is right, it would be good if you would listen to what they had to say. So don't overlook anybody. That's the first thing I would suggest that we can do together, even myself, is that when God is speaking to somebody, at least give them an opportunity. And you know the word yourself. So then when somebody else speaks the word or say they have a word from God, that it lines up with what you already know. So Azariah came and he went to Asa. So he went out to meet Asa and said to him, he said, Asa and all of the people that's with you, including Judah and Benjamin and anybody else that's working in this area, I need y'all to listen. He said, I've, I've seen you take down that million man march. He said, the Lord is with you when you are with him. The Lord is with you when you are with him. He said, if you seek God, he will be found by you. In other words, 
Um, if you're seeking to meet, a, 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 let's say you're seeking to meet a certain type of, of employee, if you're an employer, and you're seeking and you go through all of this, all these interviews, and you just cannot find that person that you are looking for, so you settle, okay, I'm going to hire him or her because I can't find the exact person I'm looking for. But God has said that if you seek me, him, you will find him. It won't get us. You won't get a substitute. You will get the living God if you seek him. How do you seek God? You go into his word. It's the only way you can do it. You can't, you can't conjure a thought. You can't meditate on it. You have to go into the word and flip the page and say, I am going to find out if you are who you say you are for yourself. God's word is the only thing that nobody else can give you. You have to taste it and see for yourself. I can describe him. I can, tell, I can show you some evidence that he's working in my life. But in order for your tongue to taste what I cook, you got to put it in your mouth. So God is saying, if you just only take my word. And I say that every day as if I was talking to a group of people to say, let's just read it and see for real. What did he say? Because it is just that easy. He said, if you seek him, he will, Azaria said, if you seek the Lord, he will be found by anybody that seek him. But if you satisfied that you found him already, I would check the word to see whether you really found him. That's what I did because I thought I had it. But it was, life was so confusing. I had a confusing marriage. I had confusing rules. I had confusing dress code. I had confusing things I did. I went out and I begged for money for my pastor. And I remember this white um, uh, 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 guy at the drugstore owner, he came and he said, I'm going to give you some money. I'm going to help you out. He said, but you know, you know, this is not the word of God. I said, what you mean? He said, God, I don't want these people doing what you're doing, but I'm going to give you something. So, but he said, but I, he prayed that I find God's word and seek it. So I learned how to conduct myself. And when I saw that that man was right, I didn't seek him right then. I just know that that man left something in my ears that nobody else told me. Most people just give me money or I sell them something. And I took the money all to the church and gave it to the preacher because he said it was his turn to be blessed by being the pastor for a year. So every year we would raise thousands and thousands of dollars just to let him have it, which he took all the money every Sunday anyway. So, but that day he just got some extra, extra, extra. But when you seek God, you, you won't be led like that. When you find God, you will not be misled. Not like that. You might learn some things about yourself. But nobody else going to fool you. Now, some people say, well, I just got common sense. I never would get caught up. Well, a lot of people still doing it. Why? Because they seeking popularity with the past. Anyway, the Lord said, I ain't like that. If you seek him, he will be found by who? By you. Not by somebody who tells you about him. By you. If you seek him, he said, I ain't trying to hide from you, but you got to come find me. You got to be in a position where you go into my word and you got to trust that what I'm saying, I ain't lying. I am as good as this word said I am. But if you don't know what I said, that means you and I have not met. All right, if you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you abandon him, he said, I'll abandon you. What do you mean to say God will walk with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. He said, you don't want me to bother you? I won't bother you. You don't want to talk to me? I won't talk. You don't talk to me? I won't talk to you. But anybody that would get in this word, this is how we ask God a question. You read the word and you say, Lord, what does that mean? Then he'll give you instructions and say, look that word up. It, it, it's just a, it's a simple book, but it's a, a simple book that you have to have a dictionary to kind of open up some things. And once you get it, 
You on the road then. He said, but if you don't want me, when's the last time you talk to me? He said, now I don't talk to people who, you know, I'm married to you and then you keep going out sleeping with somebody else and then you jump in the building. He said, I don't do no stuff like that now. He said, now you can call me. But if when you get sincere, then I'll show up. But if I know you just playing game because you in trouble and you just, you just want a way out, he said, I don't do no stuff like that. He, mm -mm. he said, I don't work like that. You don't, you can't come to work in, 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 for the company and you feel like coming today and you don't come. He said, I'll get rid of you. A company will. I mean, that's the way we as human beings would do. You work for me, but you come when you get ready. Ah, no. He said, well, you made just like me. He said, well, how do you think that you got that response to stuff like that? He said, you got it from me, the father. So I'm to you as you want others to be to you. I'm to you. I'm the same way. I won't write. You won't write. He said, but if you abandon me or you don't have anything to do with me, you, you, you never touch my word. He said, I don't know you. I know of you, but I don't know you and I never talk. For many years, Israel has been without the true God, without teaching priests. Oh, Lord. He said, teaching priests. He said, for many years, he was talking to Asa, Asa being the king and a righteous king. He said, a lot of years, Israel, the one that God got out of Egypt, he said, you walked around without me. And you didn't have a teaching priest. Oh, you had a priest. You just wasn't teaching. He was just trying to get what he got to get to pay the bills that you made. I don't know. Just, he said, you had a preacher, but you ain't had no teaching preacher. And without instruction, he said, they didn't teach you anything and they didn't give you instructions. Not for me. He's going to be having a revival today. But when they turned to the Lord God of Israel in their distress and sought him, he was found by them. He said, when Israel hit rock bottom, bottom why is it that we just got to get in total distress before we turn out and give God our best? That's how we do it. Kids at school don't really respond correctly sometimes until they got to be in trouble. That's not the way God designed us. That's just how we live. We just live like when I don't have nowhere else to go, then I, when I'm nobody, I did all this and I turned and I went and nobody would help me, then I turned to God. God said, I, okay, I'm glad you turned and I was there for you because I saw your sincerity. But that's not the way I want to get along. I don't want my, I don't want my husband. Well, I'm just saying, a woman doesn't, doesn't want her husband to, to love her when his girlfriend quit him. That's not how God, God said, I ain't made like that. I don't want you just coming to me because you can't find nothing else to do. And I, I'm just your last resort. But I will be. Because things are going to get so tough. He said, I know how to turn you around. But the problem with that is where you live to come back. But when they turned to the Lord of God of Israel in their distress and sought him, this is the revival. This is the change. This revival said these people are almost dead. You go into the book of okay, let's go with, let's go to the first time God got rid of the earth. Uh man, Adam. Sin was so much like we doing in the United States. And to God drowned everybody except uh, Noah and his folk. They got on this on that boat that he built for 120 years. This word has been being preached or in the, this book has been laying around since for 2,021 years. This copy that Jesus got into our hands, we got this book over 2,000 years. And if it took Noah, one man to build a, a 120 years to build a boat and tell people to get on it, and they didn't. God said he'll never destroy the earth like that again. But he said this word been laying, on the, laying, laying around for 2,021 since Jesus said it is finished and I'm out of here. 2,021. He said, when the last time you met me, I ain't talking about opening this book in the county. It's not a book. I don't care. I don't care. 15,000 people in court tell you you can open this book in the county where you want. You cannot. 
You can't open this book any kind of way you want. If you do, you're going to get confused. Oh, you said, well, I got some good out of here. Does it make sense? Does it flow? Did it's, my question would be to a person like that, because I did it. What does, if the book is of any value, and you went in there and you found some good in that part of the book, okay, let's that, say that's true. But what if I was like that Ethiopian, and I needed you to explain to me, and you say you, you know the Christ, and you, you understand this book that I carry. And I said, but I'm interested in... Um, Second Chronicles 15. Because that guy was in Isaiah. He said, I don't know what I'm doing. And then he preached to him Isaiah. And that guy went on with the truth and took it on back to Africa. And the other guy, the, the, the guy that was running by foot kept moving. We got to be so prepared in this word because it's just that easy. I know if I can get it, anybody can get it. I read that book. I probably started wherever I thought it was. I started in the book of Galatians and I did find myself in there. With that, that's how gracious God is. But when he raises up people to show you the right way to read it, that means turn around and see whether or not it can be even easier. I ain't know it about I thought that it's, I started in Galatians and, and I just thought you could go all over the book. And if Galatians did point me to some things about myself that I know I need to change. I can't tell you that you cannot get anything from God, from, but I'm just talking about how easy it would be. There is a, it, when Jesus said, take this book and learn of me because it's easy. I mean, this book's so easy until a, a, a Parker can teach you everything that I know. The only way it's easy is because I learned how to read it chapter by chapter. I mean, you can build a house and you can make it hard. But if you got instructions and you follow the recipe or the blueprint, it's easy. Well, you know, I did build a room. I had an uncle that could build a house without a, without a blueprint. At the end of the day, it was crooked. Oh, they lived in it now. But your, you had to turn your head to get in the door like this and you had to duck. And that's how I live the word of God. Because anybody can mislead me. I would listen. I'd sit up in somebody's ministry for 17 years. Because I wouldn't read it for myself. I was trusting that they loved God enough to, to, to care about me. I had to go care about myself. All I'm saying is, I'm talking about the children of Israel who came out of Egypt. I'm in 2 Chronicles. And I know the whole story. And it's not to boast. I know who God is talking about. I know that this guy named Azaria, his name is not mentioned in here, maybe once, might be twice. I know who Asa is. I know who Asa daddy is. Asa daddy's name was Abijah, and he was the son of Solomon, and Solomon was the son of David. I know that this is the son of the kingdom. I, kingdom, I know that I, all I'm saying is if you saw, and I just started reading like this two years ago. It'll be two years, May 24th. God has allowed me to be online every single day. Not one day have I been discouraged enough to not be online. And he has allowed me to breathe. And every day I read that same chapter over and over again until I get everything out of here. And my son came in yesterday. He's a mama. He walking out. He said, how is it that you got a routine of discipline in your, of your life that you could be found doing? He said, how you do that? First of all, I didn't know what he was talking about. I knew what he was talking about, it, but I don't know what I look like to them because they know I have a routine. I said, I found someone I love. I found somebody that can actually help me. And I learned how to read the word. It just, it just makes sense to me. And I'm not overindulging. Like, I'm doing what I want to do. Everybody doing what they want to do. I'm doing what I want to do. And I'm learning. And if you go on my web page, I'm learning to be a better writer. I think faster than I can type. Sometimes you might read my writing. I might drop a verb or something. I don't mean to, but I'm going back over it. 
I start writing. I write one song every day. One song. I read the word. Got a song. I put it on TikTok. I put it on. I put it everywhere I could put it. And I hope that one day my children will stumble up that they don't know if I live. And if I'm not here, I'm trying to leave something that would give you understanding that's for eternity. And it's not, it doesn't cause anybody anything. I do it because I love it. What they said Michael Jordan said, he said, I played basketball for free. I would do this without a dime. And I'm our preacher. Absolutely no. I got to pay the Georgia power bill myself. And God makes a way. I get on my computer. And God, when I need a computer, a computer was there. I was had a little bit of computer. My son said, what you looking at? He said, you can't even holler. Mom, look how you looking at that. He said, go on up to the store and send me the invoice. Ooh, went up there and got it. Got all kind of acoustics, anything I need. Because I know I love God. And when I need what I need, God said, girl, that stuff, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but let's get back into the revival. He's, this, Azaria said, for many years, Israel has been without the true God, without teaching, without a teaching priest, and without instruction. But when they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, in their distress, and saw them, he was found by them. Now, it, they might have went out as a million, but they came back in, in hundreds. So you can't take that chance that when you get rock bottom that you're going to call on the Lord. He said, you might not. Everybody said, that guy that was hanging on the cross, he, he talked to God, you want to go? To, you want to get on the cross? Do you know what it's like to get your hand nailed in? Why would you want somebody to beat you all the way down to death and then you call on the name of the Lord and you and then the other guy didn't, what about the other, other thief? He ain't changed his mind. The enemy wouldn't let that guy change his mind. That guy cussing and the Bible said railing out his mouth. Both of them started out doing that. But one of them backed off and said, wait a minute, this guy ain't saying nothing. That got his attention. He said, you know, when you get to get to help me, where you going? He said, remember me. Jesus said, okay, you'll be with me today. But don't try that. But if you do want to try it, get nailed in your hand. Let somebody uh, uh, put you in the electric chair. Because that's what it took him. I mean, that's, I mean, if we're going to do that part of him, why live like that? Why be like the children of Israel where millions are dead? And finally, somebody said, I want to change. I, I, and then sometimes, you know, bad stuff do change people. Sometimes people change because of distress, but we don't have to. And those times, there was no peace. Uh, let's, let's compare where we are in this revival time that we need today. He said, those times, there was no peace for those who went about their daily activity because the residents of the land had many conflicts. Do we have many conflicts today? Gee, what happened? Nation was crushed by nation. What do you mean? White people was fighting black people. We don't have today. This is Second Chronicles. He said, nation, what's a nation? Look it up. It's a group of people that practice the same culture. It's cultural. People that just live together as one because of, you know, how they talk, how they eat, how they dress. One nation fighting the other nation. He said there were many conflicts. Nations was crushed by nation, city by city, for God troubled them with every possible distress. God's okay. He said, God did that? Yep. God said, I'm over the evil and the good. I am the director of life. You don't want to go down the path. I got a path that you can go down. You want trouble? I can bring it on. I direct evil. Evil can't do nothing without me. The enemy has to have permission to do the job that he does. And I tell him to go ahead. He said, they don't want me. He said, God is saying, you got to be led by somebody. Is it going to be me? Or you going to choose door number one, two, or three? I got your best interest at heart. He said, but they had so many conflicts. They fought. They were burning, building. They were looting. They were doing everything that we do today. That's, that's, that's what's surprising to me. This book is so, this is the newspaper for the day. Nations was crushed by nation, city by city. For God troubled them with every possible distress. He said, you want some problems? Keep doing it the way you're doing it. He said, but as for you, Asa, 
Judah, Benjamin. But as for you, be strong. Don't give up for your work has a reward. He said, look, anything that I ask you to do, and then you do it right. He says, it's, it's a reward. God has said, I got a reward. I'm a type of God. I don't play. I'll pay you for the slightest thing you do right. You just got to keep it up. You got to keep He said, I, you know, if you don't see, when I get on the scale and I don't see the results that I want to see, he said, just keep it up. It ain't no such thing as change and change don't happen. You might not see it, but you better believe it's happening. Go in there and try them pants on that you had on the other day and see them they fit a little bit loose. And that's just the way God said. You might not get it overnight, but you better believe the day that you change is the day I start coming back to it. You start coming back toward me, I try to get on the path so you can find me. I try my best to put a flashlight out there because so, I know you're way out there. He said, you can be on the telephone talking to somebody. And get ready to just tell a lie or to gossip. And the phone said, dun, dun, dun. God said, that girl, you better thank God. Me, I hung that up trying to get you to think. Don't let that. Don't, don't. Take advantage of the stuff that make you stop doing the things that you're doing wrong. Tell God, thank you. When Asa heard these words, this one, the revival. Our revivals are not like that. Our revival. The United States and my neighborhood need a revival. We got to start calling black, black, white, white, right, right, wrong, wrong. You got to stop playing with it. Well, you know. Let's see what they did at the revival. When, er, when Asa heard this prophet, Azariah, Azariah, and he came and heard the word from the Lord, he said, do you want, do you want to hit rock bottom? Because everybody hit rock bottom ain't coming back to the top. Some will. A remnant. A remnant means a very few. He said, that's what you want. If you can, if, if you can come back, this is what happened when Asa heard the word, the king Asa. When Asa heard these words in the prophecy of Azariah, son of Obadad, Oded, Oded, O D E D, Oded, Oded the prophet, he took courage and removed what? He said, let's, let's start making, it, let's do something to show God that we're serious. He removed the abhorrent idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities he captured in the hill country of Ephraim. This guy said, everything, every law, you got to take down that homosexual law. You got to take down that abortion law. That man said, this stuff is coming down. There wasn't no secret. They did the same thing. Same thing we doing today. They did it too. We doing nothing new. You got to take them things down. Them things blatantly tell God, we're going to do it our way. God said, no, you're not. No, you're not. He said, you got to blatantly say it. That's not the only sin, but prostitution, strip club, uh, all the things, that, everything that don't line up with God. We, 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 do, we, we ain't having no fun. You, you having fun. We living in a time now where police are quitting their job like crazy. God said, I'm telling these folks. He said, I'm telling these folks. It's something getting in the buzz or the ear of the folks that I ain't finna. I can't be reverent. You, I can't be helping and you. I just, it's too confusing. So it's too much. We don't know what to do. We, we can't be led. Like, I'd rather be a farmer. Let's go to the word. It's in here. Asa went in there and took courage and removed the abhorrent idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin from the cities he captured in the hill country of Ephraim. He renovated the altars of the Lord that was in front of the porch of the Lord's temple. Then he gathered all Judah and Benjamin as well as those from the tribe of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon who were re residing among them for they had defected. You know what defected means? I boldly walk away from your church. I'm going to me a church where I'm, I'm going and I want you to know I'm gone. Defected means I, I'm disconnected myself and I'm telling you I'm leaving because you're not teaching the word of God. And they're going to say, you church hop, you can call it what you want. These folks, I'm leaving this mess that you got me all wrapped up in. We're doing all kind of crazy stuff. And here's a man over here teaching us the simplicity of the word of God that has worked for millions of years. Well, ever since God been God. And we start making up our rules and regulations. We're going to do what we want to do while we stand up there and just become puppets. I was listening to this guy teach the other day. And he took over this church. If I was not 
That man sounds so much like the human voice of the man of the church that he took over until it was almost, I thought he was playing. I thought he was joking. It's like a, what you call a ventriloquist. I mean, if you said that right. Like you talking, but somebody else is, your mouth moving, but somebody else is, your, your voice, and whatever it is, that voice sounded just like it, physically. And what I heard, he wasn't saying nothing, and the guy that was, um, Sounded like one saying nothing either. I'm sorry, he wasn't telling the truth. Then he gathered all Judah and Benjamin, as well as those from the tribe of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who were residing among them, for they had defected him. That means defected means I leave you and I want to know I'm gone. I'm not trying to do this behind your window and hope that you don't, you know, did I, I just be, uh uh. I denounce it because it's wrong. For they had defected him to him, for they had defected to him. From Israel in great numbers when they saw the Lord his God was with them. These folks said, we get up out of here, we're going to defect right in front of his face. We close the door on you. And we're walking away because you know you're not teaching the word of God. And he said, I ain't doing it behind closed doors. They left there and said, I'm going where I can see what I, when I get home. The same thing in the word. My children can understand I'm going home and read for myself. They were gathered in Jerusalem. In the, and he said, this is when it happened during this revival. A revival means I'm getting ready to stop sinning. And I'm going to show you by my evidence I ain't doing it no more. Not no emotional feeling. They were gathered in Jerusalem in the third month of the 15th year of Asa reign. I'm telling you. Let me go back to this abortion thing. Mamas are encouraging daughters to have abortions. Men are encouraging women and even paying them. If you got to do all that, you know they're wrong. They were gathered together. They went to Jerusalem in the third month of the 15th year of Asa's reign. He had been king for 15 years. At that time, they sacrificed to to the Lord, 700 cattle, 7,000 sheep and goats from all the plunder they had brought. Them folks said, God, we're just that serious. Imagine killing 700, what, 700 sheep, 700 cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats. Imagine killing that many animals. These folks were not playing. If I got to stand in line and do what I got to do to show God I'm serious, I'll wait. They, they said we are, I mean, because in order to make that type of sacrifice, that was their way of telling God, I own this cattle. This is all I have to give you. I give it to you. And that cattle represents the blood that had to be shed so that you can understand what it cost me. And they was like, this was no joke. Be a cattle man and then, you know, go get 700 sheep today and then get several thousand other cattle and then see how much you put on the scale to ask how much they weigh and how many people can eat from that thing. Them folks are serious. We got to do something drastic. We got to tear down things. We got to call it what it is. It shouldn't be one person saying it here and another person saying it. All of us, the same people that made one voice to put them laws in position this country been crumbling ever since Barack Obama said that he justified. I'm sorry. Yes, you cannot go against God's word. I don't care what color you are. You can't go behind God and wake up in the next morning. The Supreme Court has said, I mean, not so much. I'm just talking about since they put them laws in place. Tell me what's been good. Well, it was fighting before then. Yeah, but when you stuck that thing on that law and made that thing and said, and then now you got little kids saying that it's okay. The sins that were chosen before, you didn't make it law. You knew it was wrong, but you wasn't crazy enough to make it a law. You're not going to make it a law that you, you, it's okay for a woman to, make it a law that it's okay to sleep with another woman hood. Make it a law. Let the kids know, because what you do when you put make it a law, you tell children that God is it, supported. I taught at a school my last year. My principal practiced and was married to a man. And he was a man. 
All the kids in that school knew that it was acceptable because that's, you know, they didn't think nothing of it. Just as, just as, just, they don't think nothing of it. When you start damaging the thought of a child and don't give him a way out other than to think that what you just made a law out is secure, the country coming down. This country is not getting ready to get in the building. You can't even bury a man T today. And in the, in the, why today somebody going to the grocery store to get some medicine to be sick, you shoot and kill a sick man. Why are you on trial with another man that you already taken a life? But that, we, and then the police is today in Albuquerque, New, New Mexico. I saw it this morning. They said, we out of here. And the word said all this. All of this was going on there. Who are you going to call? Israel had gotten so bad, the Bible said they were left to defend themselves. They said they couldn't call the police. So everybody had to buy a weapon. And people now shoot you just because you look like you're doing something wrong. And then they'll shoot you now just because you ain't doing nothing wrong and they still want to shoot. If the police drop down, because the way we got it is chaotic. But we don't talk about it because we feel like, you know, I don't want to say nothing. I'm sorry that you cannot sanction anything against God's word and then at the same time call God for his protection. And it's written in the word. And I love Barack Obama. I don't agree with you and your wife and y'all did it not one bit. I wish I could sit down and talk to you. This was a king and his name was Asa. He was just like a president. Don't be so bold to do something on record that you want to be the number one person to, to, uh, to say you, 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 st you crossed the line that now you're known as the, uh, uh, a pioneer or uh, uh, somebody radical that you did something. I don't care what you did. If it didn't line up with the word of God, you, 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 you're going to regret the day you did it. If a man want to sleep with another man, don't make no law out of that. You call his whole nation to crumble. It's certain things God said, I'm just not going to tell her. He said, how in the world did I tell you not to do it? And then you get beside yourself and do it in a way and, they, and think that I, I don't have my, I ain't directing the enemy. Number one, get the law off of them. You got to. You got to denounce it and have, you got to say it's wrong. It can't be no... And you can't, I don't, I don't get us. I don't get, I don't get us. Stay with the word because I'm reading the newspaper. What does the paper say? Then they entered into a covenant. Uh-oh, where did they go? After they did that offering, they came in with all them sheep, that serious, expensive stuff, and told God to take it. We are so sick of our children dying. We are so sick of our sons dying. You got nations. We ain't through yet. Do you think people excited about the verdict the other day? They're, so these folk are already plotting. Why we got to get to a point that we just lose so many lives because, because people mad. People don't know what to do and they won't write, but they won't go to the word of God. So we are repeating the cycle of what God already said in 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Then they entered into a covenant. After they brought that offer. <coughs> Because they had to bring some blood. Some blood had to be shed. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord. Said, Lord, we'll pick up this book and read it. And we'll just pick up the book and read it. And we'll just pick up Genesis and take your time. Read Genesis. And see won't God make a move in your house. I've been, on, I've been online every day like I get paid. <laughs> like in my job. And because I see us. I see my children. I see my grandchildren. I see, I saw myself. Then they entered into a covenant to see. That's what I did. I said, I'm going, I'm going to find out. Because I'm tired of being misled. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of, the, of their ancestors. David ancestors. The God that David served. Jacob. Abraham. Hold up. So many people we don't know. Rio. I had to spell it again. Rio. R-I-O. That man named it one time. But he sought the Lord. 
30, 30 guys that helped David win the war. David stopped giving me all that attention. These guys helped me. Them guys that sought the Lord. A lot of people that sought the Lord. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their ancestors with all their heart and all their soul. I finally got the meaning of the soul. When I speak, when I seek the Lord with all my heart, that means I'm getting in this book. That's what my heart is. That's what I'm drawn to. That's what my checkbook say. That's what my Amazon account say. That's what everything I do. I try to make sure that it's in, in line with moving toward how to make things easier for somebody who might want to read. But how you put your soul in it? I always, all these years, I've been waiting. Like, what is, how do, do I define the soul? The soul is just right here. The only way I can tell you what the soul is, the soul is like the fingerprint of everything that you do because you do it as you pay it attention. Like when you cook, your bowl's clean, your, your spoon's clean. You ain't dipping in the pot and sticking in the spoon in your mouth and saying, no, uh-uh. That means everything that makes it that your hands did it and nobody else can taste it like that but you. You put every bit, you put your foot in it. You paid attention to what you write so much, so women, hold up, I need to capitalize that. You paying, putting your, putting everything that makes you, it's only your identity. You did, did it so well, now your heart, we get the word of God, that's, that's the instructions of God. But your soul is when you intend to do it with all your might. There's no way, there's not a script for it. It's what you know got to be in it, in it so you can get what you want out of it. That's that spiritual part of you that can't nobody see, but they see it in the results in the way that you do the things that you do. And it's, you can't even hardly describe it because it's, it's only yours. It's, it's, it's made, manufactured with the, the care that you took and put in it to look after something that you put your, heart, your, your soul in. You sought the word of God. That's where your heart is. And then you took the word of God and you strategically, intentionally said, I'm going to follow this word. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord. This is the revival. I ain't talking about the revival that we grew up and we jumping around and uh, I, I, people do it any kind of way they want to. But the revival that Asa did, they started saying we're, we're sick and tired of this. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their ancestors with all their heart and all their soul. Whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel would, would be put to death, young or old, man or woman. When you come into your house and say, you like it or you don't like this cable going up, I'm not letting y'all sit in my house and watch everything that come across this, this thing because it's the only thing that's on. Whatever default did back then was, if you don't want to seek the Lord, you're going to die up in here. We ain't dying for you. Oh, but Jesus already paid the price. He said, you still got to set some standards. You still got to set standards. You got to be black and white. When a man start approaching you saying inappropriate, sir, uh, excuse me, please don't talk to me like that. We got to set some standards and say it's clear to people that we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. He said what they did, 13, but whoever would not seek God's word, the God of Israel will be put to death. Young, or old man or woman. Oh, I didn't you going too far. I ain't say that. Yeah, read. Your child don't want to act right. Oh, let's get to the part. We get to the family. They took an oath to the Lord in a loud voice. They ain't doing it in no secret. They wasn't talking about, well, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Mm -mm. A loud voice was shouting, not dancing, shouting. With trumpets. And with ram's horn, in other words, called a solemn assembly. We getting ready to go after God's word, like it or not. We sick of nasty neighborhoods. We're going to pick this mess up, like it or not. We go to there and petition to these folks and say, look, you doing something in this neighborhood that's causing all us to go down. You got to stop. Because you know what? If you don't stop other people, all us going down the same drain. 
If it's somebody don't stand up and say, this is right and this is wrong. All Judah rejoiced over the oath. They heard the word of God and said, go for it. Put that word back in that school. You got all the mothers. If you don't believe, if you believe the word is a big old fairy tale, what is Harry Potter? So put it up there beside here. And God said, I ain't got no problem with that. Put it up there and put, it, put me in the fiction in the fiction section and say, I'm not real. Let a child, he said, I told you good. Don't you ever make a law. Well, kid, he said, I told you let the little children come to me and forbid them not. He said, I told you don't, he said, I said don't forbid them. That means don't you make no law against them kids getting to know me. But we sanctioned the law and then we've been adding degrading things to our communities ever since. We got priests that don't know instructions or don't get them from God. We got that. Number one, you go to church. If anybody teach you out of this word and they just talking out of their head and they never tell you to look at it, you need to get out of there. This is the book. It has to be read. And I'm not talking about going in there and then you say, well, the Lord said, my subject today is, I'm going to go down to uh, 2 Chronicles 16, go to verse 5. Child, please, out of here. I can't go in the middle of a subject and then you tell me to go to verse 5 and we skip verse. Hey, I ain't doing it. I, you know, I'm just saying. He said what they say. They took an oath to the Lord in a loud voice and shouting and trumpets and with ram horns. All Judah rejoiced over the oath, for they had sworn it with all their mind. And I made up my mind you're not going to live. Like I made up my mind you're going to beat me up my, upside my head no more. I made up my mind you are not my husband. You're going to get out of here. I made up my mind I'm going to call these folks and tell them to come pick this up because I can't pay for it. You got to put some laws in place. I'm going to make up my mind and tell everybody I've been stealing. Well, just stop stealing. They have sought him with all their heart. God said, I'm serious. He said, I know how to look at on the same street. And I will allow the enemy to go in that house, leave that house alone. Corona, I dare you to go in there. Well, they had sworn with all their minds. They, they had sought him with all of their heart, and he was found by them. God said, that's he said, when you, when you get serious, I'll show up. That's how you seek me. It's the revival. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. He said, ain't nobody going to bother you coming from the north, the south, the east, or the west. You make up your mind, you're going to stand for me. Then I'll make sure that nothing come against you and that you ain't gonna just be talking. Walk around, we walk around, we fear God's word while the enemy building edifices, cathedrals of places that look like God's house and ain't nothing going on. We can't even go in there. And the schools, it, you know what? I'm all about done. 2019, I retired from teaching. I had been in school for 33 years. I got snapped. I wanted to get out of that school so bad I couldn't stand it. I mean, that's all I knew to do was teach. And some teachers stayed there and said, well, I need to work a little bit longer and make a little bit more on my retirement. I wanted to get out of that thing and said, girl, there's something about me getting out of here. Now if I don't get out of here, it's almost like <clears throat> I got out just by, just like that. Like I was snatched out because my mind, well, I got to get out of here. Because I was sick of parents coming in there telling me what, oh, you start hearing that stuff like that, lady. Ma'am, please, I, I can't, I said, my nerves is bad when you start telling me what I'm doing and what your kids, you know, want to, I said, I'm just letting you know. Anything shoot out of my mouth, I'm at a point and I can't take it no more. Yeah, I'm not sitting in a conference and let you run your mouth to me and I'm sitting up here and I got to act like this is my job. I'm going to tell you later, I'm going to tell you back off. I mean, I mean it from my heart. Because I, I don't mean it in the harm. I said, but I'm at a point, I, I'm fed up. I've seen low down principles. 
I've seen low down teachers. I've seen disrespect for kids. I've seen us. I I was so <clears throat> excuse me. I was so sick of the, the. I was so sick of. I was just tired. And somebody said, "You know when it's time to retire." I I just knew I was. And when I got out of there, it was almost like I escaped something. And the teacher called me this morning. And how they trying to have school now? That don't even make no sense to me. I said, God allowed me to get out of that thing. 2019. I was so ready. I didn't care. And the folks said, you leave now, we're going to take $10,000 when you know you're not. Well, you didn't sign the right paper. I don't, I don't care what it's going to take. Give me all my money. Well, legally, blah, 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 blah. I got that money because <clears throat> I had I, I had ten thousand dollars worth of sick leave. Give me my money. I'm getting out of here. And I was like, and I looked back today, and I said, Lord, thank you for every move that you orchestrated in my life that you snatched me out of. Just because I would have been just totally, I can't even imagine trying to work today. That's so chaotic. I don't care how they make it feel. There ain't no way in the world that a child is being educated the way it's set up now. We are crumbling and we won't stop. King Ace also removed Maka, his grandmother. And that way it get hard. It's hard. We can remove this. We can talk about the, the laws that were put in place under certain presidents. And that, you know, that's, that's bold enough to say it because it was the truth. I ain't lying. But it's hard when you got to tell your grandmama she got to get out of the way. Revival is serious. King also, King Asa also removed Maker, his grandmother. Ask president the president now, do they know the word of God? How are you going to lead people without God's word? Either you lead them knowing what God said, or you lead them and you don't know what God Ask them, say, how are you going to lead us without God's word? You at least ought to know it. Even if you want to tell us to go a different way, well, I know God said it, but we're going to do this. This man said, and he was the president. He was just like the government. It's not the church. This is the king. This is the man that got the position of the government. Asa. King Asa also removed Maker, his grandmama, from being queen mother because she made an obscene image of Asura. Grandmama. God said, hey, think about age, positions. I don't care if that's your mama, your grandmama. I don't care how old she is. I don't care if I have white and brown. Get out of the way. When you get serious like that, you just tell the truth. You don't care nothing about nobody. You just say what the word says. It's not your word. It makes sense. It makes sense that all the things that we've gone, see, okay, this is how you waste sin. Can a child, is it okay for the children to do it? Then it ain't, it ain't good enough. What do you say? A little child shall leave them. If it's not okay for you to say it in the presence of a child, then it's sin. It's easy. If a child saw you commit a crime, That's another way of looking at that thing. That's deep. But now we teach our children by our example and what we ignore and how we ignore God. Then our children grow up and things are not going to get better for them. <coughs> you said, Grandma, you, you, you build that sex goddess over here? You did that? <laughs> Dad let you do that? Oh, no, Grandma. Baby, don't you mess with that. That's all I got. Chop it down. Grandma, mom, grandma, move out of the way. Asa chopped down her obscene, her obscene image. Then they said that thing that woman had was so pathetic until they said that they don't they didn't even leave enough words to describe how pathetic an old lady um engineered such an ungodly practice until they just say it's just too despicable to even describe. Asa chopped down her obscene image, then crushed it and burned it in the Kedron Valley. He said, I don't know, Grandma, I'm going to take this thing down, chop it down, burn it up, and I dare you to build it again. 
He said, how in the world I'm going to be the king over the nation? Then you sitting up here doing this old low-down stuff behind closed door and you my grandma. The high places were not taken away from Israel. Nevertheless, Asa was wholeheartedly devoted his entire life. He told God, as long as I live, I'm going to stay in this word. High places were not taken down. There was some place, and the only way I asked God this morning, I said, now when I read that, he destroyed some places that were high, but there were some that was not high. And then the only way I can give advice to my granddaughter, if I was telling her this, there are some things out of my reach. I'm going to take down everything I can. Those things that only God's God said, bring the word about that, I'm going to handle it. That's how I see that. And I saw different commentators who try to make that make sense, but I had to make sense for my children and my grandchildren. And so I put it right in. I got to do all I can. Those things I can't do, God knows if I could or would. But I'm dedicated to those things that I can make a difference in. He brought his fathers, and then after he got all the house straight, mama, that's wrong. Uh, Supreme Court, that's wrong. President, that's wrong. He, he set everything in the house in order. And then and then he went home and told grandmama, this is grandmama now. This is the folk that folk will kill you. Well, my mama taught me that. Girl, I'm killing about I got a mama, so who mama right? I get tired of people telling me that your grandma. I know I got a friend that totally told me that lady would almost want to hit me. Because I said, whoever talked to the world, my grandmama told me that. You don't talk about my girl, what you holding up with that for? At the end of the day, what does that really mean? It means that you didn't read this scripture right here. Now, he got everything he had to do to remove the stuff that was not like God. Then he brought his father's consecrated gifts and his own consecrated gifts into God's temple, silver, gold, and utensils. So God is saying, get away from my altar. Stop bringing me your tithes. Stop bringing me your offering. He said, certain Certain things ain't ties. I don't, you can't go out there and lay up with another man. He give you money for you laying up with him. Then you tell him, I want to pay my tithes. I don't want that. Get off my altar. I'm not, I ain't that kind of God. He said, after he did everything, then he brought the word, told us in, in uh, Malachi. He said, leave that stuff and go home and stop beating on your wife, making her cry. And then come back and bring me an offering. Because you doing what's right. Don't try to get, don't bribe me thinking that you're giving me something because it, it looks like it's something that everybody else thinks it's something. God's, I don't want your money. Go home so your wife can stop crying to me at night talking about how you treat her and how you sleeping with the members. That's Malachi. He said, get, get up and go home. And he said, don't deal with the wife, wife of your youth treacherously. And then you come in here with your hand lifted up and she crying. He said, I know every tear that fall out of her eye, I know why she crying. We doing all kinds of stuff. It's got to be a real revival of a breakthrough. What's the beginning of the revival? Go back and read the word and let's see what he really said. And stop saying, well, that's Old Testament. Okay. I had six children. In Matthew, when they said Mary is a boy and she said, I got to call him Jesus. Okay, that's when it was a boy, but that baby was in the womb. The Old Testament is the ultrasound of what's the heartbeat of what is to come. What God doesn't like now in the Old Testament, he ain't going to like it later. He said, I'm trying to bring an end to it. When I, he said, I'm going to tell you something now. In teaching, if I come to you after school to teach, and in the New Testament, it's after school because school was in the Old Testament. But if I send you support after school and you still won't come, you want to flunk. He said, where did I license you to continue in sin in the New Testament? If what we are doing is old, why are we still getting the same results as the folk in the old did when they broke the laws 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago? We, we, we break the same law. We got the same diseases. We got the same fight. We got the same wars. But we don't need the Old Testament. In a minister that told you that, the word said, be careful. Because if you teach some people that you do it and you teach others to do it, you in trouble. 
Tell me what, what book in this book that I need to tear out. Tell me what page I need to tear out. Let me tell you that and I won't read. Since we got, that's old. And, and people that say they don't even read the word. They're just talking. And God said, tell me it's old. The high place was not taken away from ears, and nevertheless, Asa was wholeheartedly devoted in his entire life to God. He brought his father's consecrated gifts and his own consecrated gift into God's temple, silver, gold, and utensils. So everything in here, he said, we're starting over. We're getting ready to bring back the things that ought to be in God's house. We're going to, we took it up from the enemy, and we're getting ready to put it back to where it's supposed to be. And he said the last verse, there was no war until the 35th year of Asa's reign. God said he didn't have, I'm telling y'all, if we would just stand up, and this is not bashing people, sin is sin. I don't care if it's in me. And like I said yesterday, if you tell me I'm wrong, I ain't got to say nothing about you. If I'm wrong and I'm wrong, thank you for letting me know. All us wrong. It ain't got nothing to do with no fight. If you tell me I'm wrong, you tell me, say, Brenda, something on your nose right here. What am I look like saying something on your eye right here? I'm finna clean my nose. <laughs> you help me out. You made me better. We got to stop saying, well, you can't tell me to sweep around your own flat. Child, if, if, it's a, if something is wrong with you and somebody tell you, they got, if a drunk man tell you that you bow, you bog your car in the wrong yard, they ain't lying your yard. If I were you, I didn't move my car. I ain't be out there arguing with you. Well, you drunk. We don't get nowhere like that. The word says, if a man that is righteous is corrected, he's happy. He thank you for he ain't trying to look for nothing wrong with you so you can go back and say, you can't tell me nothing. Yes, I can. And like I said yesterday, if you go to the doctor and he giving you a diagnosis, he got, it's, it's probably something wrong with him. But he trying to help you. <laughs> he probably, he might need to lose 10 pounds too. But I'm just saying, but if he telling you to lose, ain't no need to you You telling me, he look, he said, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Jesus said that when they tell you to do right and they do wrong, he said, do what they say. You just don't do what they do. Matthew 23. I normally don't tell people where to find it. Google it. It'll tell you. Jesus said, if anybody tell you to do right and they do wrong, he said, do what they say, not as they do. <laughs> I said, that means stop telling people. You can't tell me nothing because you got something wrong with you. Did that fix your problem because I got something wrong with me? <laughs> Anyway, we got to be clear about are we on the Lord's side or we just going to bring in and this stuff up in the God said, I'm telling you, no, I don't play. He said, been, he said let, let people know I don't play like that. He said, you don't play. In your own house, you do not play when it comes down to what's yours. He said, so is me. You don't want anybody coming in your house. There's a place where you go to the restroom. You can't use the restroom anywhere in my house. Well, that's the way I want it. He said, this world is mine. He said, all souls are mine, but the soul that don't do what I say, it shall die. You don't want to die? How in the world you want to die? Me and Jesus, be over there doing electric slide. I'll be walking. Yeah, I said, me and Jesus. I'm, I'm trying to look. I'm convinced you're right, Lord. You can correct me. I want to be over there with Jesus. Got that tattoo. Been engraved on it, the words in his thigh, and I recognize and nail in his hand. I saw the print. I'm just talking about when we get together, we do an electric slide. Because the word said the young and the old are going to be dancing together in the street, playing together in the street. He said the boys and the girls, and the young and the old, the man on the cane, going to be playing. I'm going to be one of them. But hold on, Jesus, I'm trying to get in that. And then, it, why would you miss out on life simply because you don't want to treat people right? With this thing, he said, God just tried to hop my fence. Skinny, adult, male, bald, blue shirt. That's a, that, Somebody right now, in the midst of all of this, somebody's still trying to do that. That thing came calling my phone. All of this God has said is stop promoting things that I said don't promote. Because if a child, if it's good enough for children, then promote it. Well, that's me saying it. I'm just saying. But you know it's wrong. That's why you got to make a law out of it. Because it's, I, my sister was telling me about a mayor, you know, she married to another woman and she got caught with a nut 
and, and you a lit. You better call this stuff wrong. Or we have not seen the end of what God is going to do if we don't. But one thing I can say, if you live right yourself, then you got God's protection. He has, you have his provision. But you got to have some standards about it. We got to have some standards because we're doing everything. And uh, that's just the way it is. I read the word and I say, Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you forgive me of my sins and you wash me, make me clean, help me to see the things that I can do. Help me to stand. Help me to be the type of reader that will not only read, but exercise those things that I see. Help me to say no when it's uncomfortable because if your word said it's not going to work, help me to breathe no out of my lips so I can get the yes and approval of you to keep it moving. Ladies and gentlemen, God has allowed me to read chapter 15 of 2 Chronicles, and I'm getting ready to read chapter 16, and you enjoy your day as you read this word. Go back and so let's start this thing. Let's get a revival and just, let's just, hey, let's just play, let's just see if God right. Let's try God's word and just see if it's right. If it ain't right, like Elijah said, you know, the God that answers by fire, let it be God. If your God be God and you can do it without God, then let, it, let your way be right. But at least try his way. Let's stop one day and just see and obey God one day and see if life sort of shift. But if you find that he's just not real, then at least you try. Love y'all. Bye.